Joffrey Renly Rob Stark are all thieves. They'll bend the knee or I'll destroy them. I'm sorry, Your Grace. His Grace the King commanded none to enter his bedchamber, a household guard said to Mina, somewhat too sure of himself. Mina huffed and pushed the man aside as he protested. What can he do? I am Queen Mother, Mina thought to herself as she forced open the cumbersome doors to Florian's chamber. It was the morning after Florian had gotten horrendously drunk at his council meeting. The smell of sweat and other things lay thick in the air. Mina was somewhat peeved at her son's old ways, or what she thought to be his old ways. Florian's chamber was an amalgamation of the king and the man. One half with clothes and debris from his revelries, the other half books and statues, marble and samites. She spotted Mother's Mercy between two towering bookcases, as if they were in a room separate. His bed in the centre, a bridge between the two worlds, the king and the man snoring. She then walked to the other half, the man's chamber, leaving the king's, over to the marble basin that had a woman's corset half drenched in water, filled a jug with water, walked over to the bed and emptied it over Florian's head, soaking his velvet red bedsheets. Florian gasped breathlessly. Who would dare? Mother? Florian had risen from his mattress, outraged, but whatever fire had been in him fizzled out when he saw who it was that stirred him. Ugh, Crane, Florian groaned. Up, it is past midday. I sense you are somewhat fragile, but a crown waits for no man. I've had someone else take your duties for today thus far. Which one of my brothers did you pick? Gods be good, don't let it be Theon. It's not Theon, is it? No, Mina chuckled as she drew back the curtains. Gently, gods be good, woman, Florian said, his arms covering his eyes. Well, who is it then? Simmons Dirt, Mina said abruptly, while beginning to clear her son's room. She was a woman of low birth within the confines of nobility, and she hadn't forgotten it. Simmons? A hand sits the throne. You know only a monarch or a regent can sit upon the weirwood throne. They would need special dispossession, Mina cut him off, which I gave him as the regent. She continued to clean up the fruits of Florian's revelry, avoiding Florian's questioning gaze. He is my best friend, loyal and a good man, but the Tyroshi are here today. This is our first delegation since they funded Cousin Enger's rebellion. Why do you trust him so? Florian questioned gruffly. Goodness, you are worse for wear. You sound like you've been chewing gravel, Mina laughed. You are dodging the question. I saw how quick you were to rectify his statement last night in council also, Florian said, leaning forward, his velvet sheets only covering his lower body as he twisted in interrogation of his mother. He boasted of his greatest deed as hand and you hushed him. Why? Oh, that, that was nothing. Don't think too far into it, my love. You are clearly too ill for matters of state. I'll make you soup like I did for you when you were little. That should cure what ails you, I'm sure, Mina said, clearly dodging Florian's questions yet again. Florian peered at her more and more as she made to leave the room. It was still a mess. You never do that, Florian said, clearly suspicious now, but not sure what of. What is going on? He finished. Never do what, my love? Mina said, exasperated. You've left my room a mess. You'd always tell me to tidy it when I was little and end up doing it yourself. What on earth is happening? Mina Seven Star, dodging her son's questions. I never thought I'd see the day. Where'd you run out of words? Florian said, laughing. That laughter dropped from his face in an instant, his face paling as the realisation set in. Simmons? Simmons? Gods be good, mother! Florian said, disgusted. He's my best friend. My best friend is sleeping with my mother. Why him? He's bolding and stout. I I forbid it. I am the patriarch of this house and I forbid it. Did Ronald put you up to this? Is this some sick joke? Revenge for his mother. Answer me, Mina. Mina sat down defeated. It's been nigh on twenty years since your father's death. Her face fell downward. During your regency, I grew close to Simmons. Yes, he's unconventional. But... He was an unconventional choice for Hand. For the same reasons you chose him for Hand, I have fallen in love with him. He is kind and loyal to a fault. It was he who guided me through your father's passing years later, and that grew into something more. Her face was a mask of guilt. He guided you through father's passing, Florian said softly, 
He guided you through father's passing? He screamed. Florian reached over his bed and retched. Mina wasn't sure if it was the alcohol or the news. Most likely both, Mina thought. My best friend guided you through my father's passing to guide my mother into his bed. That's how I see it. Florian was rough at this point. I will have his office for this, Florian said, spittle bubbling in the corner of his mouth. It was father who raised that lord of yellow mud from his shithole of a keep to high lord, and this is how he repays him. I do not need another father. Mina sent for Harsley Seymour, King Florian's ward, and whispered to him, Go and fetch the chestnut case from the corner of my chamber. Be quick about it, Mina said with a smile. She chose to forget that he was Enga Seymour's son, just that he was Alice Sevenstar's grandson. A few minutes passed of awkward silence except for the sound of Florian's distressed pacing. When Harsley entered and laid the chest down, Mina opened it. A fresh one every day. The box was filled to the brim with roses, some dying and turning to powder, each one a different hue, some red, some blue, some pink. He cares for me, Florian, and beyond these halls I have no one. You and your brothers are grown. I need Simmons as you do. He has a shoulder I can lean on. What of his wife? Florian said, less waspishly. Really? You? You are going to ask that? Mina said, her wry smile on her face. Very well. Let's get him off my throne if he's already on my... Florian stopped himself before he could say what he was going to say. He sighed. Let's go deal with these Tyroshi. He said, defeated. As they left the room, they saw one of the king's stewards giggling. Ronald Highstar, to be precise. How much did you hear? Florian said, ready to be the butt of the joke, as Ronald had been for years. I heard enough. Ronald's mask fell, and he burst into laughter. Florian cuffed him on the back of the head. Justice at last, Ronald shouted down the corridor to his friend. Hello everyone and welcome back to This Is Dope With Me, Grand Maester Stitch, where we return to the Grand Northern Kingdom of Andalia with King Florian. Um, so, in the last episode we had our genius son, Prince Enger, who is not the heir unfortunately, but Ambrose is shaping up insanely well himself anyway, the ten-year-old. I don't know if we can force to train him again yet. No, we cannot, which is a shame. I can't wait till we can. Hopefully we're going to have our first formidable fighting monarch in quite some time, I think. Was Ambrose the last formidable fighter? I think he very well may have been. So it would be interesting that another Ambrose is going to take up that mantle. Um, we're, of course, still getting claims in the north, which is taking some time. We've still got the truce with this Stark, who has fled to Skagos. Um, he does have cancer, though, so maybe he could die soon, which would be hopeful. All of his um, family is completely imprisoned. And he is losing this war against the slave raid pretty heavily. So hopefully... He'll be dead soon, and then we can go to war. Else, we're gonna to have to wait four years, which is quite annoying. Uh, Lady Bess, the Moody Frog, what an awesome name! Uh, of Red Fork has died at the age of 62. Okay, um, but yeah, for that, we're just getting those claims and seeing what we can do. We could maybe have another tawny or something at some point. Um, what do we need to do that? Um, has not held a tawny in the past 10 years. Wow, so we can't do that for some time then. Uh, Lady Paramount, Randa of the Claw, died from too much drinking. Okay. The frog as well. Why is she called the frog? Should she be the crab? But okay. Ah, uh, because she's Ah, uh, okay. Interesting. Um the scribes and coin masters of the Bank of the Crown have put together the bank's accounts for the past few years and are ready to present their findings to the various key holders and shareholders. Okay, so overall accounts, we've lost some loans. General running costs is down, but the income is up massively by almost a thousand coins, so that's good. Current coin reserves, 10,000 gold almost. Nice. Um, list of debtors, we've got uh, several debtors. Wow, one who's borrowed 600 gold. Um, someone from Blackwater Bay. King of the North, who owes over 200. So yeah, we've got a lot that's going to be coming in, which is good. Uh, someone's failed to repay 34 gold. And a list of lost loans, which is none. Okay, so the bank's doing very well. However, this is died in suspicious circumstances. Jessamine Bolton has had history of the Rhoynish Wards added to her treasury. How is her son, Theon Bolton, doing? Because he's pretty, he's pretty epic. Another genius, attractive Bolton, which there seems to be so many about at the moment. And I've just left my phone on loud, I've realised. So I do apologise for that. Let me just put that back um, onto silent. There we go. Um, right, yes, but let's forward time just a little bit quicker. Hopefully we're not going to have to wait too long to have to deal with the king of the north we could plot to kill him but that's not really 
Florian style, is it? Um, I believe that one of your vassals can be discouraged from associating with conspiratorial factions if the proper leverage is obtained. Who is it? Lord Samuel Corpory of the Fingers. Who isn't it? It was his sibling, wasn't it? Who was the genius? Who is at court in Hearts Home still? Yeah, he was the better Corpory. Um, well, let's have a look at him. What would be the best one to go against him? Um, let's threaten him. I think threatening the Corbury Lord could work for us, so we'll try doing that. Uh, I ask for your forgiveness. If I've done something to offend, I obviously wouldn't dream of associating with any factions conspiring against you. You are forgiven, even though you'll probably do it again pretty soon. Um, Lady Mud is still scheming as usual, but at least we've sorted out the Corbury problem now, so we can probably send our spy master down into the Mudlands again to try and improve stuff there. We're still trying to fabricate claims in the north, which is taking... A hell of a long time to get that one in Sea Dragon Point Warehouse. Green skin, the um, wargs live, um, which will be interesting to have the grey starts and the green skins. Um, Ursula Crescent died of depression at the age of 25, collecting ample tax revenue. Wow, 156 gold. Thank you very much, Prince Enger. That is pretty impressive, actually. Wasn't she the Lady of the Grey Cliffs? Yes, she was. So she's died young, but at least they have had two heirs. And wow, that's pretty cursed. Um, Morgan Greystock and Sorona Greystock. Neither with those green dreams yet, but at least the Greystocks are going strong. Can we... Are you, are you widowed? No, you're not. Do we have anyone that we can arrange a marriage with to you? Get you another bride as quickly as possible. We do have a seven star. Um, that's it, really. Who is Leara seven star? Our kinswoman. Let's see if he's interested. Yes, he is. She's hunchbacked, but if we can make relations better, and look at our cash just increasing massively all the time, we could hold another feast. Florian holds a lot of feasts. Why not? It just keeps the vassals on side so much, and they all love us, and it's pretty cheap, isn't it? So we'll go for that again. Uh, may you live in harmony and contentment. I accept the suggestion that Liara and Lord Fiamar get married. Perfect. <clears throat> I'm not sure who she was to us. She wasn't a direct seven star, but she's a distant member of the family, so we'll go for that anyway. And you know what? I might just search for a smith again. Let's make a weapon for Prince Ambrose. Why not? Uh, we won't spend lavishly. We'll spend enough to satisfy everyone's hunger because we don't want to get fat. Um, Lord Will of the North March has usurped the title of Lordship of North March. It doesn't really affect us that much. And we'll invite everybody to our feast. Let's... We'll look at those in a moment. Let's search for a smith. And a weaponsmith, let's make a weapon for Prince Ambrose until he can inherit um, Mother's Mercy. Um, dear High King Florian, I thank you for your invitation, but I will not be able to attend the feast. In fact, I refuse to set foot in the same castle as you. Respectfully, Lord Samwell. Okay, well, that's a shame, Lord Samwell the Tall. I don't see what all the fuss is about there. We could send you a small gift, which would improve your opinion of us massively, so we'll do that. Uh, dear High King Florian, I thank you for your invitation, but I will not come i don't really care about you you're no one of importance looks like everyone else is going to attend though so that's good <clears throat> we can what's this is this to usurp a title usurp the kingdom of north yeah we're not going to do that as we've spoke before the re there's many reasons why we don't want to do that we're going to have to take it by conquest instead um our charity work is going very very well in the streets of sevensport uh, the conjurer produced a rabbit from a hat and then made a handkerchief change colour from brown to red and then he simply vanished from the room only to knock on the door and open it a few seconds later. You must perform at my feast, dear sir. Got some wildling ships, wherever they're off to, I do not know. It's always worrying to see. And it looks like the Starks have finally lost their war and now he is in hiding. Very annoying that we can't declare war on him. We can duel him. Let's, let's offer him, let's offer him a duel, see if we can kill him in a duel. The spineless, narrow-minded fanatic King Edwin has refused your challenge. Never mind. The guests have finally arrived in the Seven's Port. They've been given bread and salt, is that guess right? All is now ready. The cooks have worked day and night preparing the food. Our stocks of brown ale have been replenished and the palace has never looked lovelier. Let's see how many crazy things we get kicking off this time. Roderick Graffin has had a composite bow added to his treasury. Okay. But things are at peace. Things are going fairly well. Still surprised that the South has not made its move. They formed Westeros, so I thought their next move would have been to try and attack us. Um, just to unite Westeros. Now that they have the claim. Lady Sarah Blackmire died frothing at the mouth. Okay, she had rabies. Lovely. Um, as the feast begins, Lady Amora Mud presented a petition before the court. She says that crime in banditry in Old Stones is an increasing threat. 
Yep, we'll send Lord Mance to deal with the problem. Hopefully that'll improve her opinion of us. And a minor merchant from Sevensport is present at the feast and has taken the opportunity to bring a petition before you. He says that Guinea Harlow owes him a debt that has gone unpaid, whilst Guinea himself claims that this debt is no longer valid and urges you to declare the debt cancelled. Um, the debt stands, the merchant must be paid. Yes, pay your debts, pay the merchant. And... Lord Mance organised a group of men to tackle the bandits and rogues in Oldstone. He successfully captured or killed many prominent criminals and publicly hanged them as an example. Perfect. That's going to improve her opinion of us as well. So hopefully that will get rid of her ideas of rebellion. Some of the guests did not seem satisfied with the food, but I would never have thought one of them would have complained. Who complained? Lady Morsa of Redfort. Well, that's a shame. And Lord Athelmore of Luna Woods died a natural death at the age of 57, which is a shame because he was pretty badass. Who is the new Lord crescent then oh a torturer a fat torturer who is pretty shit compared to his father which is a shame um sir zachary mudd has used his attendance at the feast in seven sport to present a petition for justice before the court he claims that while he was detained by lady amira mudd he was barbarically tortured and mutilated he demands justice and redress for his abuse on his person but he has been blinded so i'm guessing it was her who did it and we will lose just so she definitely did it um I will order Lady Amara to pay reckon. Let's have a look at Lady Amara. Who is her heir? Guy Mudd, who's okay. He's not deceitful or anything like that. Oh, he is deceitful. Um, he's just low. His son is all in Mudd. Um, so he does have an heir. Just have siblings. Who is married? Is it Bess Mudd that's married to our brother? Yes, it is. We could arrest her. And that will stop her constant, constant plotting kill two birds with one stone here and she has done something pretty barbaric we can order to pay she'll lose a 15 percent opinion of us there's a very good chance that we can imprison her i think it's the right thing to do we will imprison her and lady amara the cruel has declared war against the tyranny of king florian that's fine we will have to attack her then and lord samuel of the fingers accepted lady amara the cruel's call to arms okay um she's called the banners of sea guard who else is that the net got involved or are they staying neutral no they are getting involved again so we're gonna have to do something about that aren't we so it looks like a lot of the realm has joined her side the dishonorable byron dorandon has failed my answer to arms okay so the royces as well okay so the royces the muds the dondarians jossos have stayed neutral for whatever oh she's in hiding and expecting a child she's the final months of pregnancy that that makes sense we'll let her off for that then but Unfortunately, the Muds have risen up along with the Dondarians and, of course, the Corbrys and the Royces. So, okay. Um, we'll call up the Sevensport army, of course. 9,000 strong. The, the Blooms, will we get a better army from the Blooms these, day, these days? Probably. A thousand men. We'll call up the Rose Hearts. The Fire Hands. That's a pretty decent army. We'll march towards Seven's Guard. Do we need any more? Do Winterfell actually have manpower again yet? Yes, they do. 4,000 strong as well. So we will... Wow, 10,000. 4,000 was just Winterfell. Wow. That is a lot of manpower that Sir Brandon Stark is bringing to the fray. Do we need any more? I don't think we'll call up our Vale armies. Oh, sh would it be a good idea to call up our Vale armies? What can the Seamors bring to the table these days? 2,000. Now that is impressive for the Seamors. Very impressive. Oh no, a thousand. Um, the Red Guards, three thousand. They are going to be attacked by a mud host almost instantly. Let's march that Seymour host up there. And we'll also call up the Steel Heart host of 500 men to meet them there as well. What can we call up from the Eyrie? 8,000 men. What about from Strong Song? 4,000 men. Marching into the Eyrie there, that should be more than enough manpower. Let's call up the Red Fort host as well thousand men and let's call up the redstone host as well which probably won't be a massive amounts he is a child but that's going to be enough to take down these rebels and let's on pause oh and is that the iron islands that have risen up or have they stayed they've stayed neutral they've got their own problem oh no the seastone isle okay so some of them have decided to join us but the actual lord paramount has stayed neutral uh the last of the guests have returned home good and my master at arms, Manch Chainbreaker, has told me about a remarkable weaponsmith residing in Moon's Grey. Yes, we'll invite him to court and see what he can give us. Let's march that host there, actually. March you there. 
watch to see more hosts into the Northlands as well. So the reeds have yet again risen up. So we're going to have to knock them down a peg or two after this war, I'm afraid. It's happened far too many times, and Florian has been incredi incredibly lenient towards them as well. So, yeah, they're going to have to pay for that, aren't they? So let's bring our hosts together, and then we'll see what we can do. Um, once the weaponsmith craftsman has been checked by my most knowledgeable attendants to ensure the quality was sufficient, I received him in the throne room. We will go for a sword for our son. And we want the very best sword that you can make for our son, Ambrose. A sword worthy of the Prince of Stars. Has our host met up in the north yet? They're still gathering. Florian is leading that host. Who have we got leading this host? Vortimir Hardstill is currently under my control. And his relative, Lord Byron Durandon, is currently opposing us. Well... No, it's not his fault, is it? Uh, Danies Royce is currently under my control, and his relative Lord Roland Royce is currently opposing us. Um, no, it's not his fault. And Bess Mud, our daughter-in-law, it's not her fault. Yorina Royce, it's not her fault. But that's a good point. We could... Lord Roland could be replaced by... Oh, it's not even his... It's not his brother, then. Who is... Who is Danies too? to him to his cousin so we could and it's our own cousin but he's our cousin as well isn't he i think or is he not yeah he must be so we could just give it to danies instead we've got sir alec royce who is fighting against us at the moment but he's just doing his liege lord's work we could replace we could replace the royces and the mods with another member a more loyal branch of the houses which would be interesting where else rebel the corbries yeah we're gonna have to bring the corbries down a peg or two along with the reeds they they are stepping out of line the muds are powerful we don't really want to upset that area too much we do have a marriage with them so if we fix that somehow i think we can do something to fix that bernard the skin changer was beheaded by the lord of um house crescent the new lord right let's see well, we've got fourteen thousand men now in the eerie Let's merge those together. Who have we got leading this host? We will go with... Let's go with Danies Royce. He can fight against his own family with Danies High Oak on the flank. And... Byam Laxey. He can lead that host. This host here in the Riverlands can be led by Lord Redguard then. As it is close to his home. With Lady Sansa Firehand. And... Brandon Stark can lead the host with us in the north. We do have some commander slots open so we will we will fill them actually only one but bound to have somebody of half decent use that we can put in there maybe must be somebody lord belmont who is fairly new he's pretty decent actually owen steelheart who's not even a commander but he has commanding traits which is interesting um yeah we'll go with let's go with harif rack he's decent Let's get a rack in there. I don't think we even called up any rack men, but we'll we'll have a rack there anyway. Let's get Brandon Stark to lead this host with us, considering the Stark host has joined itself to us. And we'll have Harif Rack in there as well. We'll wait for those 2,000 redstone men to arrive, and then we will attack that Royce host. But that Corbury host to the north is fairly worrying, to be honest. Let's merge these 5,000 men. Let's march those up into the Vale, actually. They can be some reinforcements. We'll take them up to the bloody gate to come and help out. The Mud Host is a little bit stronger, so I don't really want to go into their organs blazing, to be honest. Um, what have we got here? Your Grace for too long. I do not care about whatever's going on beyond the wall, if I'm honest. We've got more pressing matters than what a bunch of savages are up to. Right, 20,000 men here. 10,000 start men are on the way. They're marching south, which is good. We will march south to join them very soon. Right, 17,000 men under the command of Danies Royce. Let's march those onto that Royce host and destroy it. You'd think they'd learn the lesson and join these two armies together. They'd have a 20,000 strong host then. And you think these two would, but 
they yeah they just don't learn their lesson we've got some sort of rebellion going on in the iron islands it doesn't phase me too much let's march our 20,000 men southwards towards the cross fort <clears throat> these 5,000 men under the command of lord redguard are on their way and winter is turning colder so it's not the best of times to be fighting right now but what can you do it um, weeds out a couple more of the rebels as well that are fighting against us which is good um, we could call up the small Grafton host, which probably isn't a lot of men, 200 troops, but we could then get Runestone under siege, I suppose. I don't even know who else we've got in the fingers that would make a good High Lord, to be honest. There isn't really any other houses there, so we'll have to look into that as well. <clears throat> and what we can do to punish those. Uh, I am sorry, my High King, Theobald said apologetically. The weapons missed for me that Paris is... Uh, that the precious metals and special tools needed to produce the sword I order are impossible to find in my own realm. We'll send someone to find them. Whatever you need to do, it's a sword for a prince. We're willing to spend the cash. Cash is not a problem for Florian. And we're going to have our first battle, which he does have a lot of defensive bonuses due to the mountains. What is Danes? He's an aggressive leader, which could help. Danes Rivers is just a dutiful commander. And Byam is a flanker, but he is on the flank, so that could help. I think the sheer amount of manpower will help here as well. We've got 5,000 reinforcements making their way slowly to Redstone as well. Uh, Red Fort, sorry, not Redstone. And we should easily win this battle still. Royce versus Royce, which is quite interesting. There's two Royces leading this host. And yeah, we've absolutely annihilated that army by the looks of it. We've crushed the Royce host, which was probably the biggest army, wasn't it, other than the Corpory one, so that's good. Or of a host is slowly making its way down. It's a good job that I did split those in half. Um, Lord Damon Seven Star. Okay. I was thinking I didn't know there was a Damon Seven Star, but it's on the blue branch. Okay. There we go. Completely crushed. And Sir Alec Royce was captured in battle and is now my prisoner. Um, we'll put him in house arrest. He's of high birth, and I think he is our cousin as well. So we'll be merciful there. It's the main lord that has been the problem. Let's march these 16,000 men straight on to fight the Corbury host. And this 5,000 men under the command of Lord Redguard can march onto Runestone and begin the siege of House Royce's home. How much longer until these are going to arrive in Greywater Watch? Pretty soon. So these 10,000 men were under the command of nobody. Let's put Brandon Stark in charge of those. It is his host. Let's begin to march those down to the cross fort as well. Actually, they can siege down Greywater Watch. Lord Hoster the Open-Handed has declared the Wide Way War for Princess Ariane's claim on Dawn on Lord Paramount Willem the Bewitched. Okay. Another one of those strange houses is going to inherit an ancient seat, which is quite infuriating. I hate it when that happens, to be honest. At the age of 64, your subject Serena Steelheart died a natural death. And Owen Steelheart attempted to imprison a Belgrave Hornbreaker, and he has succeeded, so that's a shame. And it's another homosexual lord. They're everywhere, it would seem. He has got a son, Morgan Hornbreaker. Okay, so we be interested to see what happens there. As we march our way northwards. You know what? Let's get the Corpory. Oh, the Royce host is retreating towards them. Your grace, your bastard daughter Pia is responding very well to my tuition. She has improved her skills and is advancing in her knowledge every day. She gains two intrigue. Wow, ten intrigue. Okay, very nice. Um, She's definitely with the wrong person there, then, isn't she? Um, Let's... As I'm a guardian, someone with very impressive intrigue. Well, Winton Firehand is the only option. Let's send her there to be awarded by him. Hopefully, it'll make her into a very impressive future spy master, possibly, which would be pretty interesting. March onto Runestone. Perfect. Um, the defenders of Coldwater Burn successfully raided the camps. Okay. There's not actually enough men to siege Runestone, so let's march onto Grey Glen instead, then. We'll march to Heart's Home for now, because I'm a bit worried about when them hosts join together, how much manpower they're going to have. Let's march onto Old Stones. Obviously... A famous, famous castle in this series. Been host to two great battles. Could it be the host of another great battle or another great siege? Who knows? We'll find out, I suppose. What's this random army here doing? Are they actually on our side? News has reached court that a claimant to my titles, Amira, is hiring men for an attack against me. Uh, Amira Seymour, who is 
Okay, who is who are you? You're married to a Mutant. Your father is Sir Pyron Seymour. Okay, uh, okay. Oh dear, oh dear. What is it with the um, Seymours with Seven Star Blood and rebelling at the moment? <laughs> I feel sorry for poor Engar. Um, I was struck with a nervous excitement when Master Theobald announced that the sword was nearing its completion. Today I have received the Master in my throne room, a sturdy box in his arms as he opens the lid. I find it almost impossible to breathe. What will you name her, my king? Um, Heart Seeker, Vengeance, Fury. She looks like, if, yeah, we'll go for Fury. Would you like to give a name to your Fury? Yes, Fury. Let's have a look how Fury turned out then. Um, Where are you, Fury? Here we go. Adds 15 personal combat skill. A great and magnificent sword known as Fury. Swift in hand-to-hand -hand combat as well as battle is sure to bring victory to the one who wields it. Can we give that to Prince Ambrose? I'm guessing probably should be able to. Give artifact... Fury, there we go, perfect, and send, it improves his opinion of us massively and it will make him a much better fighter, hopefully. How is the thing, wow, pretty well defended, so that could be a problem, but that's fine. Oh, and we haven't actually got a crossing there, so do you know what, we will march down and face the mud host in battle. This host is still marching out to Greywater Watch, which we will begin to siege, and we can't even siege that either, so we may as well send those 5,000 men to join the host at the fingers so that we can fight the Corbury host. Bless upon you in your house. I accept your gracious gift. What a splendid object. And he's becoming very impressive, isn't he? Why? I hate that we can't change his focus. Hopefully when he gets to 12, we can. Can we force train him again yet? No, that's okay. That's fine. And we are going to crush the mud host. Lady Selene of Eastward has declared Lady Selene's second claim on Northworld. Well, that's annoying. We can do without... A second war in the veil right now. Can we command you to end your war, please? Command to end war. And she is obeyed. Perfect. We could have called up the Sons of Enger, couldn't we? And actually made use of them. But then again, not much point, is there at the moment? Let's crush this mud host. Which will probably end the war for us pretty well if we can capture someone important here. Willem Sweetblood died of cancer, age 27. Ouch. Yeah, we've crushed the mud host. Slaughtered half of it. We'll lift the siege of Stilfen and then we'll march onto Old Stones to get that under siege, which should win the war for us if we can siege down Old Stones. And somebody, uh, Lord Magistar has declared Prince Shaw slave raid on Tumblestone. Okay. Doesn't really concern as much, does it? Um, this host will soon be able to join that host. We'll continue to siege this down. Back Greywater Watch. How goes the siege there? Oh, that should be a pretty easy siege. Uh, age 59, your acquaintance, Gaston Crane, died under suspicious circumstances. It isn't really important to us, is it, to be honest? How well defended is Old Stones? Very well defended. Ouch. So it's just a case now of sieging down stuff. Bit drawn out, bit long winded, but it will get stuff done. We could call up more manpower, but how much can we call up from Blackwood Vale? 3,200 troops. That's pretty impressive, actually. That from High Oak. 1,000 men from High Oak. We'll call those up. 2,000 from here. Let's march those onto Fair Market. And then we can lift the siege there where the reed host is. Call up the Blackwood host to take care of the Dondarian host. Prince Fiona Vandalia used a favour on priest Alan of Winterwood to force them to join all their factions. Is there any other factions? No, literally just lower crown authority and then crown loyalists, which is perfect. So things are going pretty well there. It's just a long drawn out case of sieging now. Your infection has put you in grave danger on multiple occasions. The pain and foul smell have finally subsided and your wound looks clean. We lose the trait in infection. Perfect. Awesome. That's looking bare. Puts us up to 105 personal combat skill as well, which is very nice. Thank God that's finally healed. We can stop worrying about Florian passing away because that would be horrendous. I'd hate for that to happen. King Jamie the Sage Line has declared the South Ironborn du jour war over the Iron Islands on Lord Paramount, Meldred of the Iron Islands. Ah, okay, so why they're staying neutral? That's annoying. Uh, my friend Sam has invited me to a grand banquet. Lots of people, lots of food. Yeah, why not? Even if we are at war, why not? So 
So that's interesting. The South could end up taking half the Iron Islands, which is very interesting. Very smart to make their move now. How goes the Siege of Greywater Watch? Surely that one's got to be almost over. Yes, it is. I think we can attempt an assault there. Perfect. That's Greywater Watch. Under our control, Lord Eddard of the Mother's Embrace has inherited High Lordship of the Mother's Embrace and other titles from Lord Owen, the Descendant. Okay, well, he's not overly impressive compared to his father, but fair enough. That's a shame, because Lord Owen was very impressive. Very impressive diplomat. Been around for a long time, of course, as well. Let's march these 8,000 to New Keep. And Sir Sandal was captured in the battle and is now my prisoner. No idea who you are. Open council position. High Admiral. Okay, um... Hmm. Let's go for Sir Danies Royce, who's probably going to be our new Lord of Runestone. We'll let him rot for now, as I don't really know who he is. He's no one of importance, so the normal dungeon shall suffice for him. We have arrived in the Blue Fort, where Lord Simmons has greeted us warmly in his feast. Bread, salt, and brown ale have been served as is the guest right, and the most delicious aromas are coming from the kitchen. Thanks for having us, my friend Simmons. Old Stones is taking some time to siege down, isn't it? It's way too strong to assault as well. At the age of 73, your subject, Londus Irontide, died in the dungeons of Lord Dunstan of Great Wick. Okay, 73, wow. Queen Marjorie is pregnant. Wonderful news, Lord Dirt exclaimed and raised his glass of wine in celebration. The hand had already had quite a few celebratory toasts this night, and his cheeks had reddened from it. To the king's marriage and to the health of the royal family, the hand then added and drank his fill of arbor red. The king raised his glass with the toast of his friend, but only took a reserved sip. He would like to be there when this war was over, return home and celebrate the birth of his child, finish this campaign and leave the halls of dirt for the splendour of the new keep. Even though they were on campaign, Lord Dirt had insisted to host a feast for his friend and his men, which Florian gladly accepted. Enger Seymour had raised some word to Lord Dirt about this ruining his coffers, but Florian had left them to their squabbles. It was to drink to their certain victory, and celebration was all they had managed to achieve, and that which was still to come. For much of the night he had spent it on the royal dais, celebrating in the rather small hall of Lord Dirt, and exchanging pleasantries with the so-called nobility of the Trident. But these were mostly landed knights who had less value than the king's own armour. But now he had retreated back into the halls of the castle, taking his brothers, his council and a few guards with him. They had all successfully escaped to the solar of Lord Dirt, with the sons of Enger standing guard and commands to let no one enter. My lords, it has been a most wonderful occasion. I think we can all agree. However, I do think we should look towards the future and this war, especially the Ironborn, Lister said, interrupting the merry tidings. If it had been anyone else, he would have been laughed out of the room bar Florian. They are denied to raid. Many of their ancient customs are outlawed and they are poor. Even without the rebellious squids at their help, I could not imagine their living is easy. And they had an era of greatness before Andalia conquered them. They wished to return to former glory, simply as that. The wizard master of law said to the gathered men, Their wreathing cost Andalia dearly. We must not forget the slaughters of Barriton and Gultown. These savages deserve to be at the very bottom. This is the Seven's rightful punishment, I say, replied Lord Roseheart with a stern look at all the gathered men. Let them reeve, I say, shouted Lord Dirt into the round, the wine having taken hold of him and his senses. We don't have the only coast of Westeros. Let them sail south, enjoy the riches of Lannisport down to the arbor in Old Town. Make them happy, solves everything. That would provoke the fires of war, a war which we cannot yet afford, answered Enger Sevenstar as a quick response. I think you chose your words rather poorly there, Lord Dirt, a voice suddenly said cutting through the chatter. Footsteps followed as Lord Winton Firehand emerged from the shadows. Several men looked around confused. None recalled Lord Firehand having joined this meeting, nor that he was even here. 
What do you mean, my lord? asked the Seymour Lord with a curious look. The Lord of the Barrowland simply smiled at the other men before using his one hand to retrieve a small scroll from his pouch. From one of my friends in the Iron Islands, I received this two days prior. Normally, this would have taken longer, but it is important so I chose to deliver it myself to his grace. The Firehand Lord took some more steps forward and knelt down before the king, offering the rolled up parchment. Florian took it and read the short message. Lions have landed on Great Wick, a great host that they claim is theirs to serve as bringers of the peace and to protect the West from raids. The bastards had done it. After years of strife under him and his father, the lions had finally decided to take advantage of the situation. Their hunger and pride finally extended into the seas of Andalia, and then they showed their true craven colours, attacking when Andalia was in conflict, and they did not even dare to face him in the fields. For men that wore lions on their sigils, they acted more like the kitchen cats he used to play with when he was but a boy. This was perhaps a greater threat than any one of his forefathers had faced. He knew this day was eventually to come, but the mere way it was done was an insult. Florian? Lister asked, snapping Florian out of his thoughts as he turned towards him. Florian looked around, realising that he had been trapped in fort for quite a bit, as most men stared at him. He looked down at the letter and then back up, a stony face and a cold voice accompanying it, as he handed the letter to his brother. Read it. Lister did as he was asked, and the room burst into discussion. Yet Florian didn't hear them. He was numb to it all. He felt anger, pain, outrage, and many more things. Even a slight bit of admiration for the Lannister's clever move. For a moment, he felt helpless, but what good did that do him? He was one of the most powerful men in Westeros. He was a great warrior, a leader of men, and a king. He was a king. He was the king, first of his name, from the trident to the wall, all lands owed him due. He would not act like a boy, nor be treated like one. Silence! commanded Florian, and the room hushed down as quickly as it had grown louder earlier. The king turned towards the calm Maester, a man by the name of Benfrey. Maester, when Enger the First attacked the North, was the North stronger than my forefather? The Maester was a stern and honest man, giving a short reply. Aye, they were, more men and lands. And when Ambrose doubled the realm's size, was he at an advantage? The king added on. No, your grace, quite the opposite. When the falcons were brought down once and for all, I ask you who was stronger? Florian asked with a small smile. Once more, Andali was at a disadvantage. Thank you, Maester Benfrey, the king said while moving to stand on the table. Andalia has faced many challenges, be they sickness, rebellion or invasion, but we have always prevailed. We have always won. For Andalia is not the Reach, nor the Stormlands. Its people and lords are loyal and resilient, more than any other kingdom. Be they the Rosehearts, Steelhearts, Firehands, Seymours, or any other lord in the realm. They follow but one king. So, this is but a new challenge. The Lannister Cub thinks he can scare us, but needs a time of turmoil to attack. I will tell you why. He is scared to face Andalia's true might, for he knows that he will lose. So tell me, my lords, are you scared? No, came the empathetic answer from the gathered men. We are Andalians, not Vale men, river men or northerners, but men of Andalia. We will unite and push back against this threat, like we have every other. For this realm is one. It has one people and only one man who will call himself king. We will send the cub back with his tail between his legs, and I shall dress the walls of Seven's Port with their pack. So, I ask from all of you, are you ready to fight, to die, to win for Andalia? Dear High King Florian, I am a bit concerned about this war you are currently struggling with, and therefore I've decided I would like to send you a small gift. Oh, thank you very much, Simmons. Thank you very much indeed. 33,000 men here now. Where have they have all come from? Ah, I think it's the Ironborn host. They've joined their host to ours. Um, we could march off then really yeah we could march off to the east into the vale and try and end this war but then what then again once old stones falls that's that's the war pretty much won uh while carrying out my duties for the bank of the crown i've met keyholder ellard on several occasions uh these encounters have never ended well one would be hard pressed to find a more unsympathetic man um i will confront him we'll become bitter rivals or we can lose no no we'll confront him and become rivals rather than lose up and also my fate smiles upon me and my wife is pregnant excellent 
Uh, your grace, I write to express my consternation at the fact that Lady Sansa Firehand enjoys command. We'll smooth that over because she's a good commander, so we're not going to replace her. And Heart's Home is almost ready to fall, so that's fine. We have got that under control now. Just need to get Old Stone Siege down, which is taking a hell of a long time. He's offering to pay his ransom, so I accept. Yeah, we'll take the 10 gold. You're of no one of importance. We may as well take the gold. And winter is coming to an end. Perfect. That's going to help us in our war in the Vale, hopefully. Sire Shycross died stillborn. Which is a shame. Wow, he's having sons still at his age. And at age 66, your acquaintance, Lord Commander Lewis of the Night's Watch, died of gonorrhea. Horrible way to go. Lord Commander Lewis, the shield of Eastwatch, has inherited. Lord Commander Willem of the Night's Watch. Oh, nice. Okay. Lord Grafton, who we sent there, is now the new Lord Commander. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Winter comes to an end in Seven's Port. Perfect. Come on. How much longer till we can win this siege in Hearts Home? Got 9,000 men here waiting. We may as well join them to our host. And then we can take care of the Corbury host to the north as soon as this falls. And Hearts Home has fallen. Perfect. Let's attack the Corbury host. We'll send these 9,000 in as well. We'll take care of the Corbury host. There's a small mud host there. Uh, one of your jailers has brought word from the cells. He says your captive, Sir Alec Ross, has covertly been set free during the night by a band of small men in their desperate escape from the castle. One of them was captured, and after questioning, revealed they were in the employ of Lord Roland III Royce. Okay, so maybe Sir Alec Royce can't be trusted either in the future. This pregnancy has made my wife Marjorie much more talkative. Um, hmm. She should rest. We'll let her have her fun. Today I was approached by my brother Enger. He told me that he has grown increasingly concerned by my eating habits. He thinks that I have gained quite a bit of weight in the last few months and now fears for my health. Maybe I have been eating a bit too much. Shut up. That's none of your business. We gain the trait stress. Maybe I have been eating a little bit too much. We'll listen to our brother. Let's split this host in half and send 11,000 just to deal with that mud host. I always thought my conviction and views were right, but have come to realise that not to change your attitudes in the face of truth is just plain stubbornness. We lose the trait stubborn. Okay. I'm not sure if that's good or bad, but we'll take it. Being always so distracted might have prevented my wife from taking a good rest, but all this talking with my vassals and servants has had, had the unforeseen advantage of strengthening her relation with many of the people in my court. Awesome. So that was a good that was a good call. And there we go, the mud host is going to be absolutely destroyed there, which is perfect. Very worried about this move that the South have made on the Iron Islands. One child lacking an education focus, Prince Ambrose. We will go for a martial education, of course. Look at that. Uh, Enger's advice was really the motivation that I needed to get back in shape. I cannot believe how close I was to spending the rest of my life as a fat pig, blissfully unaware of my own condition. Awesome. And the Corbury host is going to be smashed. And we've captured Sir Almin at Corbury. Perfect. We will put him in house arrest for now. And we will spend, obviously spend highly, to get the best equipment that we can for our son Ambrose. So Armin Corbury has managed to effect his escape from my dungeon. What? That quickly? Like, literally instantly. How? <laughs> How? Okay, let's go get Rushmore under siege. That's a bit infuriating, if I'm honest, but whatever. Can we lift the siege of Coldwater Burn? Yes, we can, which is going to get us some war score back. What is it? 61%. King Edwin uh, Stark of the North has failed to pay interest on the loan from the bank. The council have voted for action. So hopefully they can get some sort of result there. Where is the Royce host? It's marching off this way. Let's go take care of them. Almost won this war now. We just need old stones to fall and we've won. Raymore Wainwood is now known as the Generous. Siege of Rushmore. A great success. Lord Williman the Wicked used a favour on King Jamie the Sage Lion. Okay. 
Master Kellis of Whitford Town has declared war against the tyranny of Lady Mordain of Whitford. Can we command... We can offer to join your war. Can we offer to join your war? Offer to join Lady Mordain of Whitford. Yes, we will offer to join her because she's pregnant, isn't it? Or she just had the child. She's had the child. Okay. Your set of Robert reports are awesome. Stuff's going well in Andleton. Um, let's move this host onto Sea God then and get that under siege now that Rushmore has fallen. It's good tradition to have some gossips around a pregnant woman in order to keep her calm. Yep, she needs familiar faces around her. We'll do that. That's fine. Let's march this host south so that we can try and capture that Royce host, catch up with them and crush them. Ending the rebellion. To the most excellent High King Florian, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. I gladly accept your offer for of assistance. Let's have a look what this host is like. Oh, okay. She should be able to take care of that with her 4,000 men anyway, but at least we've said that we're helping. Have we got any men that we could offer up to her, actually? Just to send there to help? I don't think we'll need to, to be honest. There is some sort of war going on in the north as well, which is interesting. What have we got going on here? Uh, defending against Lord Desmond the Careless and Lord Desmond in the Careless. War for the North. Okay, so that would make our claim on the North even better. Let's let them get on with it because they probably will win that war. And then we can go straight to war with those Riswells to take back the North. Wow. Look at all those Lannister soldiers in the Iron Islands. That is worrying that the Iron Islands are now going to be split in two. How strong is Seaguard? Pretty strong, but Old Stones is about to fall any second now. So literally any second which will end the war, I think, in our favour. Great news, Master, uh, Maester Benfrey. Having been tended to the wounds of the men at your command, is reported to have cracked under the stress. Oh, grave news, not great news. Oops, cracked under the stress. Come on. I just want old stones to fall. Very soon. A daughter was born to High King Florin of Andalia and Queen Marjorie of Andalia named Rayella. I don't like that. Let's name after a random ancestor. Ashara, Freya, Vi Ooh, a Violet. We've not had a Violet for a while, have we? Could go for Violet. Oh, Kyra as well. Let's go for Kyra. We'll go for Kyra. We've got a Kyra and a Pia, which is interesting to say the least but left let's go for that and one's a bastard and one's legitimate like last time which is also interesting just waiting for the siege of old stones to end before i end this episode get the war over with your acquaintance septon andrew has been imprisoned okay and perfect here we go your grace we round up everyone we found in old stones what should we do with them clap lady amara in irons and leave the rest imprison the entire family in the dungeon who have we got lord harold of seaguard ah, okay she's married to a crownless which is interesting byron mud her son lady amara the cruel or land mud um let's take them all into our house arrest for now and let's offer peace and enforce demands. And that is that over with. Perfect. Is she actually losing? How is she losing this war? Makes no sense whatsoever. Um, can we not do anything with the rebels? Aha, the war has been won. The rebel armies have been crushed by our brave loyalists. Lord Willis Reed, one of the traitors, has been brought before you to hear your judgment. He will forfeit the neck. Lord Roland the Third, the Merciless, he will forfeit Runestone. Lord Dondarian will forfeit Tumblestone. And Lady Amiria, the Cruel of Seaguard, will forfeit the High Lordship of Seaguard. The war has been won, the Rebel Army, and you will also forfeit the Fingers. We're coming down hard on the traitors. And the Neck have raised their men in rebellion, so has Runestone. We've managed to take that. We've managed to take that. We've managed to take that. Okay, so this is going to be um, pretty easy. This should be pretty easy to sort out. Right, so we've got 11,000 men here. They Nope, these 11,000 go and take care of Greywater Watch. These 11,000 go take care of Runestone along with these 20... Okay, no, these 29,000 go take care of Runestone. 
these 11,000 go to Greywater Watch. These 11,000 go and help out Lady Josso of Whitford. But we will end the episode there, guys. So thank you all so much for watching, as always. I hope that you've enjoyed. Please don't forget to leave a like and comment down below. And hopefully I'll see you all very soon for the next episode.